Good evening parents, thank you so much for joining us for our Right Jenny Info evening. We're so glad that you could join us to hear a bit more about the Right Jenny program. If you have any questions throughout the presentation or into the future, please feel free to email me. My name is Georgie Evans and I am the Right Jenny curriculum leader. My email is georginaevans at tyndale.sa.edu.au. Please feel free to email if you have any questions. Well, tonight we have a really special treat because we are going to hear from the creator of The Right Journey himself, Andrew Lyons, who's going to tell us a bit about the philosophy behind the program and what you might expect from Right Journey this year. Hi, my name's Andrew Lyons and I'm director and creator of The Right Journey. I'd like to welcome you to The Right Journey for this year um, and I'm hoping that you as parents and carers and your children have a great experience throughout the year. I just wanted to explain a little bit about the background to the program and then a little bit about what you might expect from the program throughout the year. So one of the things I've become interested in in looking at raising young people is what parents actually would like their adult children to have when they reach 18. And I sent out a survey and it was interesting to get the response. So when I asked what five qualities would parents like their adult children to have in adulthood, half of parents put resilience in that top five. And something that I found interesting about that response is I look at parenting these days in this 21st century and there doesn't seem to be a lot of resilience building. We hear terms for parenting like helicopter parenting, snowplow parenting, we also have curling parenting which is what the Danes call it um, after the sport on the ice. But a lot of that is about trying to remove obstacles out of the way of our children and therefore there's not really the creation of resilience. Interesting, a book I've stumbled across recently suggests that young people in the Netherlands are the happiest teenagers uh, on the planet. And I like to ask if uh, any of you have been to Amsterdam and might like to suggest why you think that the uh, Dutch teens might be the happiest on the planet. But what the research has told us is it's actually because they're less overparented. There's more independence training in the Netherlands and this has led to the teenagers feeling happier. So it's actually interesting that in our culture it seems when I look at parenting that the more we can do for our kids, um, the more we make life easy for them, the happier they'll be. But the research doesn't actually um, back that up. And also released recently was some research from the Murdoch Children's Research Institute which found that kids these days are really struggling with mental health, with issues like how they cope with change and disappointment, not really having great empathy. And there are a number of reasons they put this down to, including helicopter parenting and overscheduling. And the call from this research, which was largely asking doctors about working with children and young adults with mental health issues, what they've asked for is more education on social skills and resilience um, in schools. And so proudly we can say that that's what we've been doing with The Right Journey um, for a number of years. 18 is the threshold moment in our Australian society where every child has all of the freedoms that we afford them in adulthood. So that transition at 18 where they become young adults, we give all of the freedoms that we afford an adult. But how have we gone about raising a child to be ready for those freedoms? The 18 year old of today is quite different to the 18 year old of um, 60 years ago. And John Marsden in a book he's written called The Art of Growing Up, actually suggests that kids these days, young people are 20 going on six. And the thing he says is that the reason for that, we can't blame the teenagers for how they are and the young people. It's really our responsibility as parents and also teachers and educators, and that we've dropped the ball a little bit on this. I'd like to check in and, and ask you what you think the biggest difference for your 14 year old is today compared to when you were that age. 
when I ask parents that question, usually the answers come up in relation to technology, um, social media. Sometimes people mention freedom and that families are a little bit different. And those things have made quite stark differences for our kids. And I want to just reflect on um, what we can do to maybe help and partly what life was like. So in, in the old days, you might remember getting on a bike and leaving for a ride and mum or dad saying, just be home by dinner. That's a very different world to that which our, our kids are growing up in. The roaming range is what they actually call it. The roaming range, as you can imagine, over the last 90 years has got smaller and smaller and smaller. And one of the issues with that is that our kids aren't experiencing that independence that comes when we hop on our bike and we go riding. They're not learning to deal with whatever comes up on that ride, having to make decisions, etc. Other things that have shifted include the fact that we used to have telephones where we'd have, have it on the wall, at, in the kitchen maybe, and if we wanted to make a phone call, it wasn't very private. Kids these days with devices have a lot more privacy but also a lot less accountability because they can be having calls in the privacy of their own bedroom. Um, that was never the case with us, so our parents would be overhearing. So we would often be called to account if we were saying anything inappropriate, whereas young people these days don't have that. The other thing that the advent of the device and the smartphone has brought about is that children and young people no longer have the safe haven that we probably had as kids where if we had, were having problems at school we'd return home and we were safe. The bully or whoever was teasing us wasn't able to contact us at home. They would have had to have turned up at the door or rang on the phone but our parents probably wouldn't have allowed them. And what I've noticed is that if we as parents are giving our kids access to devices at home and overnight, as happens in some families, we've removed that safe haven of retreat that we probably would have had as, uh, as young people. And so I encourage parents to be very mindful of how much access their kids have to devices and giving them some downtime away from them because that then creates that safe haven. The most recent Mission Australia Youth Survey, where they survey 15 to 19 year olds, over 40% of young people are extremely or very concerned about their mental health. And that's quite a change from when I was a kid. Another thing that I've noticed the difference in is just the ability of kids growing up to, to assess risk. I like to think about the trampoline that we used to jump on that uh, had no net and probably not even any padding. And the thing that we learned when we were young was how to assess risk. It's only a small risk assessment. We'd be jumping up and down and thinking, am I still in the middle? Am I still in the middle? But it's still an important little risk assessment. When we put a net around a child on a trampoline, they no longer have to assess that risk. They've lost the chance to sort of learn that skill. And I wonder when the moment will be when they will actually have the chance. The problem is the stakes are smaller when it's in the backyard on a trampoline. And if we keep putting nets around them throughout their young lives, eventually the stakes get higher and higher. My oldest son has a little scar on his cheekbone from having smacked his head on the side of our trampoline, but it was in our backyard and I could pick him up and say, I reckon we're gonna need to get some stitches. I'd rather he's learning about that risk assessment at 10 in my backyard than he's been netted and it's not until he's 20 driving at 110 kilometers an hour through the Adelaide Hills that that's when he finds the edges. So we're looking at small stakes experiences and allowing our children to um, have those. Michael Carr Gregg, an Australian psychologist, wrote an article in which he suggested that it's the wussification of kids. We're creating wusses. He says it starts with participation ribbons at school. He goes on to talk about a mum he's been working with whose son's goldfish dies uh, during the day and she's wanting to get a new goldfish to put into the bowl before the boy gets home from school to protect him really from that death of the goldfish. She rings up Michael Cargreg and says, um, what do you think? And he says, you do realise that one day that goldfish is going to be you. And what he's saying is, why would you not allow your child to have a small stakes experience of grief? In the early years, 
that starts skilling him up for dealing with grief in the latter years. Because really, as parents, uh, one of the roles is to help our kids deal with disappointment rather than protect them from it. And that was one of the things that the Murdoch Children's Research Institute picked up, that kids are struggling to, to deal with disappointments and failures. Tim Elmore has written an article which says, we risk too little, we rescue too early, we rave too easily, and we reward too frequently. And in doing those things, it perhaps stops our kids from learning to deal with things like struggle and failure. And one of the things we've noticed as teachers is that when we were kids and we got a bad report card, whether it was to do with grades or our attitude, our parents would often get stuck into us about it. Um, we would be held responsible for the report. Whereas what we've noticed in this day and age as teachers is that we're getting parents coming to us as teachers saying, what are you going to do about my kid's grade? And it's a real shift in the responsibility for how the child is going being placed on the teacher. And it's actually giving that child a pretty bad picture of how to be responsible. And one of the things we're concerned about is that those children are, may well grow up thinking that nothing's their fault and they may end up looking for people to blame in, in various situations. And so we're interested in um, guiding kids, not guarding kids, and not stepping in because that often prevents the children from stepping up. An issue that our young people and teenagers are grappling with in today's society is the easy access they have to pornography. I think back to when I was a kid and at the age of somewhere between 12, 13, 14, 15, guys would typically stumble across a Playboy magazine or something similar and that was their introduction to sexuality. Whereas our children, sadly for them, the rite of passage is actually exposure to hardcore pornography, 87% of which has violence in it. And for us as adults, we need to be speaking into that space and helping them with that issue. It's a vastly different one to what we experienced as young people, but sadly it's something that they um, are experiencing in this day and age. I'd now like to talk a bit more about the rites of passage and a little bit about the history of it and then about the right journey. Interestingly, historically, lots of research has been done and rites of passage initiations happened in every culture that we're familiar with and was a way of shifting the children into adulthood. We know that there are five moments throughout life that often were ceremonialized and celebrated. Birth, uh, the child to adult initiation, marriage, an adult to elder initiation, and death. We still do birth and marriages and deaths um, with ceremony and, and uh, celebration and put a lot of time into those, but the child to adult initiation and the adult to adult initiation, no longer do we focus on those. Interestingly, what's happened also in Western culture is instead of transitioning straight from child to adult, um, we have managed to create another stage of life which is called adolescence, which has never existed before. It's only been around for about 70 years. And in that 70 years, a sociologist would suggest that we've stretched it out from being about a two or three year time period through to, in these times, probably about 20 years. They'd suggest from about nine, where there's a physical shift for young people, through to probably about late 20s, where people are actually fulfilling full adult roles. When they researched various initiation processes in different cultures, they realized there were a series of things that were sort of taught in those moments. And a couple of them were related to shifting from uh, an immature psychology through to a mature psychology or child psychology to adult psychology. And two of those that we focus on in the right journey are a shift from life is about me and what I can get to a mature psychology of life is actually about others and what do I have to give. And the other one is that life is meant to be easy, which is an immature psychology having that expectation. We hope the kids learn that, well, life is difficult. And that's an important shift because if you accept that life is difficult, life's actually easier, but also it will enable you to, to be resilient 
and to deal with things as they come up. And we've already talked about that ability to cope with disappointments and failures, rather than if you think life's meant to be easy, just expecting things to be easy and then whinging and whining when they aren't. Various initiation processes happened all over the world for tens of thousands of years. A lot of them were challenging. You might be familiar with jumping off of large towers in Vanuatu. In some cultures, teeth were knocked out. There'd be circumcision. Fire ants or bullet ants were put in gloves and used as a way of creating challenge for the boys and the girls in some instances. But what we've noticed happens in our Western culture when we don't actually do that, the kids create these processes themselves. Schoolies week, is a rite of passage, but it's been created by the initiates, the young people. And we're not meant to let that happen. We're really meant to say, no, hang on, that's not right. We're meant to be offering the rite of passage for you. You might've heard of hazing that happens in the universities and colleges throughout America. It's a similar thing created because they want us to create some kind of transition moment in these important stages of life, but they just choose ridiculous things to, to do that with. So the right journey is intending to be a contemporary replacement for those things. We think it's really important that we have an opportunity to A, have conversations about what's really important with our young people, about stepping into adulthood, and then have some ceremony and celebration to help with that. And so the classes will happen throughout the year with your child's teacher, and they will look at four broad themes, who am I really? How do I get along with others? Is there something more? And what do I have to give? And we hope that your child will come home and share some of the conversations and ideas that they're talking about with, with Right Journey. We encourage them to talk to you about that. There is also a rite of passage which happens as well, and that's been framed in seven stages of a hero's journey, which some of you may be familiar with. So we start with a calling, we then have a departure, there's a following, some challenges, an abyss, and finally a return, and then the homecoming. And these will happen throughout the year. And there'll be some involvement from you as parents, and we would suggest that you get involved when you're asked by the school. So at the start of the year, there's a calling where the students are called on the journey and a departure ceremony. And we would love for you to be involved in those and to come along and celebrate this beginning of this shift for your children into young adulthood. We have a following and many schools are doing a mentoring program where we encourage you as a family to sit down with your child and to decide who amongst your circle of friends would be a great mentor for them to spend a couple of hours a month with as another adult. We know the more kids feel connected to adults in their life and interestingly also the more they feel connected to school, they are safer across all risk factors. So it's really important that we put some caring adults in their lives. They'll have their teacher, mentor, and parents or carers to provide that support for the students. There will be some challenges during the year which you'll hear about, a challenge program with an intention to teach the kids that failure is okay and it's actually a great teacher. So we want the kids to learn to do hard things really. So you'll hear a little bit about the challenges throughout the year. There'll be an abyss, maybe a solo, or some experience which is intended to be something that your child might worry a little bit about, and that's intentional. We want to be able to have a conversation with them about how to overcome worry. It's also a little bit about what you do when it's just you and yourself. And then towards the very end of the year, there'll be a return and a homecoming ceremony. So there are a number of ways that you could help. Firstly, we'd like you to allow your child to have their own experience of right journey and to put any of your concerns or worries maybe aside if you have those and not put them onto your child so they can have their own experience. We'd love you to attend the ceremonies and any other processes that you're invited to. Having conversations at home, helping them to choose a mentor and finally encouraging them to step up uh, into responsibility at the end of the program and, and thinking what can you maybe shift that helps them step up and, and be a young adult. 
We're really excited. We've, we've had lots of good support regarding the right journey. We've had some journals and some research done on it. I'm partnering with Flinders University because they've noticed the educational sustainability of the program. So we're very excited to be welcoming you and your child along on the right journey this year. If you have any questions, do feel free to approach the school to ask the teacher perhaps. If you're interested, there's a Right Journey Facebook page, which is called The Right Journey with Andrew Lyons, on which I post a lot of parenting information. Um, we also have a website as well. So thanks so much for your attention. I'm looking forward to supporting all of our schools. So your child will be one of probably over 10,000 young people doing The Right Journey this year across about 150 schools on about three or four continents. They're part of a, a big community and we're hoping that with the help of you as parents and carers and the mentors and the teachers that we can create a wonderful transition for our children to step into a resilient, respectful, resourceful, responsible um, young adulthood. As you can hear, there are many things to look forward to this year with The Right Journey. I'd like to introduce you to our team for Right Journey this year. We have a wonderful group of people who are very passionate about your young person going from childhood to adulthood. And you can see here, there's some quality staff members in the 2022 Right Journey team. Now, The Right Journey is about conquering many things seven of which are the seven C's, being encouraged, collaboration, consideration, compassion, connection, commitment and care. So throughout the year, your young person is going to go through a series of challenges that is going to test them and grow them in these seven areas. One of them is uh, connection and part of that is the mentor project. You may have heard a little bit about the mentor project already from your child going to Right Journey classes, but the mentor project is something that we believe is gonna benefit your young person because at the moment in society, a lot of young people don't actually have many adult role models in their lives outside of their parents. So we think the mentor project is an opportunity to spend some time with a positive and supportive adult role model. Now the project itself will be either the mentor and the student either making something or learning a new skill with their mentor and having that on display at the end of the year in a showcase and expo to celebrate the project. Now it's more about spending time with the adult themselves rather than the product. So we are really looking for someone who can um, really just sew into your student. So, who is the mentor? So, generally, we want them to be the same gender as the student. So, we want it to be females with females and males with males. And also someone who's willing to spend time and contact that student on a regular basis. So, a couple hours a month would be fine um, over the, the two terms, term three, two and term three. Obviously, you want someone who is safe and trustworthy, someone you can depend on and as a parent believe that is a good influence on your student. Um, someone who's willing to be contacted by you as parents and also us as teachers if we want to send them invitations to the Mentor Expo. Someone who's going to treat the student fairly and who is agreed upon by the family, not someone who the child wants and you don't want but has to be a mutual agreement and maybe someone who has a shared interest with the child already. Um, but our preference is that they are significantly older because we want the relationship to be someone who has more life experience, who's been around the block in uh, sewing and in, imparting wisdom into the child. So 10 years is our preference age gap. Um, there may be a little bit of leeway, but 10 years is what we'd like to aim for. Okay, so our next exciting thing on the calendar for Right Journey are the calling and departure ceremonies. So um, the calling ceremony is a dedicated ceremony to mark the significant journey that they're about to embark on. 
It's a really special moment between students and parents because they are going to have a letter of gratitude to give to you as parents. It's their opportunity to acknowledge all that you've done for them so far in their childhood and what's brought them to where they are today as they're about to embark towards adulthood and gaining a little bit more independence and freedom. There's a moment where you as well as parents will be able to give your gratitude back to the students. So um, please be prepared to give them um, a returning letter of gratitude. After that, the next morning, um, school as normal, they'll arrive at a normal time and we'll take them on an excursion to go on their departure challenge day. So the challenge day will be at Cobbler Creek and they'll go on a number of challenges to mark the first stage of their journey. We've sent out consent forms for this already last week. So for the calling ceremony, there's two dates, one for the female students, one for the male students. The female students will be on Wednesday the 9th of March and the male students Thursday the 10th of March. So that is in week five. With their Right Journey groups, uh, they were going to be going on camp later this year. So camp is definitely the highlight and it's one of our seven C's, one of our challenges. This year we are going to go to the Flinders, which is really exciting. It's going to be absolutely stunning and there'll be a number of different challenges that they'll have the privilege of embarking on. The camp itself is a total of four days and three nights and each night is in a different location so the students hike between the campsites. Daytime activities include hiking, but also a number of different team-based challenges. One of them that we did want to bring your attention to is mountain bike riding. So if they're not confident on a bike at the moment or don't know how to learn a bike, they've got plenty of time to start to practice and to learn how to ride a bike. It's not crazy intensive stuff, but they do need to be able to get up on two wheels and go forward pretty much, they'll be fine. One of the nights on the camp is the solo challenge. You'll be hearing a lot more about that as we lead up to camp. It's pretty much a chance for them to be independent, make their own decisions about when they eat, when they go to sleep, what they're gonna do with their time. And it's a really great exposure to what it might be like to be an adult living on their own. Uh, the camp is run by Baptist Care and they're fully trained instructors and they've been providing our Right Journey Camp at Tyndale last year as well and are great people to um, be able to support your young person through the transition. Also, camp, just keep the date free, term to week 10, more info to come. What can you do as parents to support your young person through this transition from childhood to adulthood on the right journey? Some things you can do is attend ceremonies and celebrations that you're invited to. We really want to partner with parents. We want you to be part of this experience. We want you to really champion your young person as they go through this transition. So please come, please attend because they are really special moments in your child's life. Uh, we encourage you to have conversations at home. What are you talking about in Right Journey at the moment? What are you thinking about? When I was a teenager, we want you to get into their worlds and talk about the whole experience. We want it to be acknowledged. We want it to be something that is celebrated, this transition to adulthood. We'd love for you to reflect on your own parenting style as they grow and develop, as the way that you might have parented them as a child may have to change as they grow and change through this transition. So think about how you're supporting them as they grow. Help them obviously choose a mentor, that would be really helpful. The sooner they do that, the sooner they can get on with their mentor project. And we would also love for you to give them increased responsibility around the house. So for those who are looking for more freedom, wanting more chances to be on their own, Please don't be scared to give them more responsibility as well, such as, you know, you can have more jobs now that you've got more freedom. You can look after your own washing or you can email your teacher yourself and ask for that extension. Things like that that's going to teach them and grow them, that would be really helpful alongside the right journey and have conversations about why you're doing those things as well. Um, Andrew Lyons talks about the concept of for young adults to step up, parents need to step back simply because we need to let them 
have room to make their own decisions and not um, give them all of the needs that they have sometimes to be able to grow and be an adult themselves they need to figure it out even when everything in us wants to help them and rescue them sometimes we do need to let them do it on their own so we're really grateful for you for joining us on right journey and we can't wait for you to come to our calling ceremony next week thank you so much for attending and we'll see you next week